What's up everybody? Today on Decolonizing the Kitchen, I am joined by Samhar Sapatu and we are going to be preparing Ganfo. Okay, Samhar, am I pronouncing that correctly, first of all? Yes, it's Ganfo. Okay, and give us a little background on Ganfo and where it's from. Ganfo is a porridge that is made with barley flour and it's served with yogurt. And it is an Ethiopian and Eritrean dish that is traditionally served to expectant mothers or women that recently gave birth. It's believed to increase um, breast milk production and keep new mothers full and nourished during the first few weeks of their postpartum. Okay, but I don't have to be like an expectant mother or <laughs> have given birth. No, no, you do not have to be a mother. Anybody can eat it. It's traditionally served for breakfast, but it can also be served for lunch or dinner, and it can be enjoyed by everybody. Great. Well, I'm excited to get this started, so let's decolonize the kitchen. So we're preparing Gun Photo Day, which you said is a traditional Ethiopian and Eritrean dish, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. And I am Eritrean, but I was born in Addis Ababa, which is the capital city of Ethiopia. Can you give us a little similarities between the two cultures? Well, Eritrea and Ethiopia share a border, so there are a lot of similarities between the two cultures. They do have two different official languages. In Ethiopia, their official language is Amharic, and they also speak Oromia. But they speak the official language of Eritrea and Ethiopia as well, which is the Grinya. So they do have a lot of similarities. Another difference is that uh, Eritrea was colonized by uh, various countries over the centuries, and Ethiopia was not. Would you say that there is a large Ethiopian or Eritrean community here in the Bay Area? Uh, yes, I think so. Yes, there is. I know there's, especially in our area, and we're in Oakland, that there are many Ethiopian restaurants in the area. Do you know if any of them prepare or serve gunfo? I can't say for a fact that they do or don't, but I don't think it's the type of dish you'd order at a restaurant. Since it's a porridge, it'd be like ordering an oatmeal. It's something that you make at home, and yeah, I doubt that they do. The ginfo we're preparing today is eaten with yogurt, right? Yes, yogurt or ergo. In some regions, it's served without it, but I grew up eating it with ergo, so that's how we're preparing it today. And I know one of the other ingredients that I fell in love with as soon as you opened the jar is the butter. Right, so the butter used to make ginfo is called nit er kabe, or just kabe, which is a spice-infused clarified butter. So the spices are turmeric, cinnamon or nutmeg, fenugreek, coriander, basobla, known as Ethiopian sacred basil, kosarat, cumin, and Ethiopian cardamom, or kororima. Any Ethiopian recipe that calls for cardamom is referring to Ethiopian cardamom, not the cardamom people are familiar with in their lattes or pastries. Are these spices present in a lot of the, the cuisine in your culture? Yes. They are. And another ingredient that we're going to be using today is the berbere. Is it one of those spice mixtures that gives Ethiopian dishes its signature heat? Yes. The use of berbere, black seed, and karima is actually very common in Ethiopian cooking. It has the aroma and the flavor. Ethiopian and Eritrean cuisine is known for its spices, but not the kind of spices we typically encounter in Western cultures. It's not spicy just for the sake of heat. It's also aromatic and gives it a very distinct flavor. Well, I'm very excited to get this started. Are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. So gunfo is very easy to make and the amount we're preparing today is good for one or two people. We're using one cup of barley flour, one to one half cups of water, one tablespoon of barbare, one tablespoon of kebe, salt to taste, and about half a cup of yogurt to finish. So you want to start by heating a dry, empty pot on low heat, but getting it hot enough to start toasting the flour. 
dump in your barley flour, add your salt. You want to keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn and you'll want to keep the pot in motion by tilting and stirring. You'll know when the flour is ready because it starts releasing a toasted smell. It takes about three to five minutes. Okay, next you want to start adding your water little by little. You're feeling for consistency and texture here. It should feel pasty, but not too dry. It should feel like thick mashed potatoes. Like I said, you want to add the water little by little because once you add too much, there's no going back. So while that's going on, we want to start melting our gray in a separate pan, again on very low heat. If someone doesn't have gebe handy, could you use regular butter or like ghee? You can, you don't have to use gebe, but it's more traditional if you do. It's also in your preference, but I personally like to use gebe since it has the spices. Once the gebe is melted, you can turn it off. So once I get the consistency of the gonfo how I want it, I take the melted gebe and drizzle a couple spoonfuls into my serving bowl. This is to coat it so the gumfo doesn't stick. You want to work quickly at this point, right? Yes, you want to work quickly so the gumfo doesn't harden in the pot. Next, we take some scoops of the prepared gumfo and put it in the bowl. Now we want to swirl the bowl until the gumfo forms into a little mound. Using a spoon or a spatula, you want to make a little well in the middle of the mound. Inside the well, we'll pour in the rest of the melted gavain and a tablespoon of barbare and mix them together. You can add as much or as little barbare as you like. I usually end up using a couple of tablespoons. Last step is to add yogurt around the edge of the gamfo and it's ready to serve. This looks and smells amazing. It's also best enjoyed with a nice cup of hot tea. Thank you, Samhar, for showing us this amazing dish, and thank you all for watching. Join us next time on Decolonizing the Kitchen. Can't take the heat The net on out Wanna see the art table Then stop running your mouth Get on your feet and roll up your sleeves We'll teach you a thing or two Time to get down dirty in the kitchen.